A few weeks back, I stumbled upon this Facebook page called Medio Media, run by Albert Lirio. On his page, he was sharing updates about Abante and Millionario. Initially, I thought they were ordinary tabloids, and I was right. Abante is a physical tabloid newspaper, while Billionario is a tabloid-style website focused on billionaires and business news. What caught my attention was that these two un seemingly unrelated entities are connected. I was surprised by their plan to venture into traditional media, including television and radio. Given the widespread use of digital media today, it seems archaic. This move isn't for the faint of heart. It's bold, it's daring, it's a make or break. Are they ready to step into the ring with the big players? Before we dive deeper into the story, please don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell. You wouldn't want to miss our future content. Abante has been in publication since 1987 under Manaho Publishing Corporation, which was once owned by national artist Milvirio Almario. The paper was acquired by Amado Makasaet, chairman of Monica Publishing Corporation and PC, and the brains behind Malaya his paper in 1988. His son Alan became the company's president. When MPC acquired the tabloid, they were already publishing a weekly magazine for students. In 1989, they launched Abante Tonight, an afternoon edition of the paper, founded by the elder Maksaed. Abante has traditionally targeted readers from the lower income classes, where you can find it in Sari Sari stores or in the Canto. As it gained popularity, the paper toned down sensational content to attract more advertisers and readers, a strategy later adopted by other tabloids. Abante expanded its media portfolio by launching its news website in 2006. Despite the libel cases, which are mostly successful and few settled out of court, the company also operates dedicated news websites like Politico, Millionario, Banquero, and Abogado. Print, web, they do it all, baby! And the plot thickens. In 2017, the torch was passed. Rage Management Corporation, founded by veteran journalist Renato M. Marfil, who became a columnist and served in the second Aquino administration in the communications office, and Kelsey Kapagugunan Jr., who was a senior reporter of the Philippine Daily Inquirer, took the reins and gained even more prominence in the news feeds. In 2023, the Media Ownership Monitor, MOM by Vera Files, reported that Abante and its sister paper, Abante Tonight, remained popular. The modest tabloid ranked 6, while the sister paper ranked 9 on Nielsen's Consumer and Media View list among the top 10 newspapers, indicating that these publications have been around for a while and are still well liked by their readers. Nice! Despite the ongoing pandemic, the country's mass media seat has been undergoing chaotic changes since the beginning of this decade. Newcomers, specifically allies of the previous administration, have been using once mighty corporations long established in radio and television frequencies. Some nailed it, some failed to complete it on their own, and others were mayfo. Meanwhile, existing players are battling to retain displaced talent and secure broadcast rights like sports and pageants. Furthermore, some are looking to secure positions for new shows that can compete with the former industry's giants' reach and reputation. However, Avante made a daring, rebellious, and trailblazing move. On October 10, 2022, they pulled out a jaw-dropping stunt. They launched their teletabloid, but not on your regular TV as they hit up the social media platforms instead. In this digital spectacle, you meet Mr. Fu, the radio personality well known for his showbiz scoops, Gigo Postolero, and last but not the least, Sol Aragones, the former abs cbn journal turned former politician. But wait, there's more! Remember those familiar faces from the old neighborhood? Yep, ex Ignacio personalities like funny man Mark Logan hop on board the teletabloid train. DJ Jai Ho was there too, contributing, but honestly, I'm not sure where she disappeared to. Anyway, Abante has dedicated news sites with interesting content that revolves exclusively on social media. One of them is Politico, and they've got this program called Politiscoop. It's hosted by Michael Fahadin, a former GMA reporter, and Ina Andolong, the ex-CNN Philippines journalist. Now back to major media sharing of two separate yet related entities that are gambling to this endeavor. First, on this feisty tabloid proper, reportedly, they'll take over an AM radio frequency at 1494 kHz that used to be belong to DWSS AM. DWSS was a casualty of the pandemic 
and their programs were forced to move to DWP L1242. The new station will reportedly, not confirmed yet, have a call sign of DWARAM. The AR stands for Avante Radio. What's going to be in there? Aside from tele-tabloid personalities like Mark Logan and the Pante columnist with extensive broadcast experience, ex Family journal Dolan Castro and Rocky Ignacio, whom you may recognize from her work in the Presidential Communications Office during the last two administrations, will be there. Second, the sister site Pignanario recently posted on social media that they are looking for producers to help launch a new free-to-air TV channel. The channel will focus primarily on business and finance content, catering to billionaires' dedicated audience. The Philippines has not had a dedicated business TV channel for some time. The most recent attempt was Bloomberg TV Philippines, launched on the Signal TV pay TV platform in 2015. However, due to its exclusivity, it failed to catch fire and was fa just vanished just three years later in 2018. The channel space it left is now taken by One News, flexing its muscles to compete with established ABC news channel or AMC. Especially news channels like Global TV PH can survive on pay TV. Imagine how difficult it will be to do so with Millenario launching on free to air TV. It's like a high stake Texas Hold'em poker game, it's not an easy task. You see, the economics and business model of free to air TV are like a Rubik's Cube. It's tricky to crack the code and keep the lights on when your audience might be smaller than a squirrel's picnic. Anyway, die hard DTT fans who believe the technology will eventually completely replace analog TV nationwide are betting that the rumored billionaire channel will end up on Beam, the not-so-secret lab for digital TV stock in the Mega Manila and other ge geographical markets. For now, the billionaire news channel or BNC will be available on Signal TV with test broadcast starting July 15. No wonder Ralph from From the Tube noticed one news content changing recently. Seth Trilon, who appeared on the then block timer of the business scoop site on CNN Philippines last year, will also be part of this lineup. Major Media also mentioned that former CNN PH anchor Mayra Rodriguez and ex media journalist George Carreño will be joining. With that rumored development, there are some concerns about their potential plan. I'll tackle them in three main reasons with some wild takes. Number one, diversification tug of war. Abante is rapidly diversifying into newspapers, websites, social media, and now traditional television and radio. Defenders of this grand plan claim it is all part of a larger strategy. They're flexing their muscles, attempted to be the tabloid style counterpart to MediaQuest. However, there's a chorus of skeptics online raising their eyebrows, and they're like, if their social media game is fine, why do they go patras or backwards to traditional broadcasting? Does it live up to their name? Number 2. Logan's Decision by Gatekeepers Consider Mark Logan's situation. You've been forced to leave your beloved company due to the rejection of the franchise renewal, and consequently, they can't afford you to stay because of constant threat losses. Suppose the gatekeeper's mentality prevail and not allow to hustle in different entities as we done today. You must choose between the one 1206 and Apante Radio. Where will we go? In the former, Mark has three roles there. The creative consultant, the station manager, and the key voice, the newly revived AM station for the government's sequestered network after two decades of silence. The challenge there is that a concerning company is yearning to restore its glory days from its current desperate state. It's a daunting task. Despite the uphill battle, time's running out as their franchise expires next year. As of this recording, IBC's franchise renewal bill is in the Senate. However, it is stalled due to distracting hearings and a more pressing issue. And this does not consider financial stability. If we consider all three factors equally, the wiser move for Mark Logan in the long run is to opt for Abante Radio. Number 3. Millionaire's Big Broadcast Temple While a dream of dedicated business news channel on a free to TV platform is no longer impossible, the platform's practicality and acknowledgement of reality will limit its materialization and longevity. It's like walking a tightrope during an earthquake. So here's my wild tape and unsolicited advice. Millionary Scoops should collaborate with Fastbreak and Sister Tides for first fans. In that case, make it a television channel. The more television channels, the merrier, right? Whatever they're up to with Prage right now on 
turning the airwaves, well good luck. But will Abate's traditional media venture succeed in the long run? Do you have any wild reactions or suggestions from them? Please, let me know in the comments. Until then, see you next time.